유형 연습 Section 1 You will hear a conversation between a tour company agent and a traveller discussing tour details. First, you have some time to read through questions 1 to 4. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Thank you for contacting Sunwave Tours. How may I help you? Hi, my name is Alex. I'm here in Melbourne for work until this Saturday, and I'd like to go on the city tour that I saw advertised in your flyer. I'm available on either Wednesday or Thursday. We can certainly accommodate that. What in our city are you interested in seeing? Well, I am curious about both historical sites and contemporary culture, but I'm also interested in old architecture. So I do want to tour some art galleries more than anything. I heard that there's a national art gallery in the city. Yes, there is. I'd actually recommend our Top Spots tour. It starts just in front of our office on Elizabeth Street and concludes at the National Gallery of Victoria, and there are lots of places to get lunch in that area afterward. That really sounds ideal. And what does the tour cost? Let's see. It's $55 for the half day. That runs for a total of about five hours. Or, there is a full day tour that costs a bit more. It includes a seven-hour tour with a free lunch. Seems reasonable enough. What time does the half-day tour start? It's from 9am to 2pm this Wednesday. The guide for this tour likes to start earlier in the day so that you can see the sunlight shines on the major landmarks at optimal times. That might be a bit too early for me. Then you might like the Major Views full-day tour this Thursday. That tour also stops by the National Gallery of Victoria but takes you up to popular viewing spots where you can see the city's most famous landmarks. It starts in the morning, too, at 11am, but the bulk of it takes place in the afternoon, ending at 6pm. The guide will also take you to a nice restaurant for lunch. Oh, all right. Hmm, I reckon the Thursday tour will suit me best. What is the cost for that tour? It's $70 per person, but we have a special this month. You get $25 off if you make at least two bookings. That seems reasonable. However, I'm the only person, so please book just one spot for me. Great. What's your name and phone number? Alex Fenway. F-E-N-W-A-Y. And my mobile number is 555-671-920. Uh-huh. Thank you, Alex. On the day of the tour, there will be a guide at Central Station to meet you. The guide will be holding a large sign and wearing a T-shirt with Sunwave Tours printed on it. Great. Thanks for all your help. You now have 15 seconds to check your answers. Section 2 You will hear a radio broadcast by an announcer about making purchases overseas. First, you have some time to read through questions 5 to 7. Now listen carefully and answer questions 5 to 7. Good afternoon. Thanks for listening to today's broadcast of Smart Shopping.
As we head into the winter season, many of you will be travelling out of the country for your annual holidays. And while away, you're likely to buy some souvenirs to bring back with you. On today's programme, I'm going to give you some tips on what to be cautious of and how to make good purchases while abroad. So, my first point is about payment. Tourists from the UK are mainly accustomed to pulling out a credit card and charging just about everything. Well, that's not such a good idea when overseas for two reasons. First, there is a lot of credit card fraud. Credit card usage is simply not secure. Secondly, the seller will have to charge you anywhere between 3 and 5% more in credit card fees that they must pay to credit card companies. So use cash if at all possible. And that brings me to my next word of advice. Check the exchange rates offered for your currency before making payments by cash or even credit cards. Some establishments offer poor rates, so it is better to exchange your money in a bank, which ensures better rates, and use local currency in those cases. Also, it is always a good idea to get tax refunds for your purchases when possible, as it can save you a lot of money. International travellers are often eligible for these refunds in many locations and won't have to pay taxes on the items they buy. Find out ahead of time what the minimum purchase amount is and what types of purchases are eligible. And don't forget to claim your refunds at your point of departure before checking in, as you may have to show the purchases to agents along with original receipts. But there are many items that you are not permitted to transport on planes or trains. So I also want to cover... You now have 15 seconds to check your answers. Section 2 You will hear a tour guide talking to some visitors about a national monument. First, you have some time to read through questions 8 to 11. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 8 to 11. Welcome everyone to Devil's Tower National Monument. Not only can you view the famous Devil's Tower rock formation, but there are lots of great routes for hiking and rock climbing here in the park. If you are interested, you can ask about those activities at our climbing office. You'll find it conveniently located between our visitor center and gift shop. Now, Devil's Tower is situated in the picturesque Black Hills here in Wyoming. The formation itself is very imposing, standing at 867 feet, or 265 meters, from the base to the summit. To local Native Americans, this is a significant sight. Because of that and its striking beauty, Devil's Tower was made an official national monument over a century ago. Since then, it has become a popular destination amongst rock climbers. So how did the rock formation get its unusual name? You might think it's because it can be dangerous to hike up or climb. Actually, explorer Colonel Richard Irving led an expedition to the area in 1875. His interpreter is said to have made an error translating the native language and said the unusual formation was named Bad God's Tower. Irving took that to mean the Devil's Tower, but many native people say that the formation was probably originally called Bear Tower or Bear's Lodge. Anyway, what are we all going to see and do at the park today? First, we are going to take a short hike up to a ridge that will offer you panoramic views of the tower and the park. The route we will be taking is called the Joiner Ridge Trail, and it is a marked loop that's a mile and a half long. Just a few safety reminders before we head out on the trail. First, please watch your step during our hike as the trail we are taking is unpaved. 
Also, please be reminded that food is only permitted in specified areas that are marked with signs, and it is vital that you do not feed animals you may encounter in the park. After our hike, I'll take you to the visitor center where you can check out our displays and browse through souvenirs in our gift shop. Okay, so could you all please come this way? You now have 15 seconds to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between two students about studying abroad in Singapore. First, you have some time to read through questions 12 to 16. Now listen carefully. And answer questions twelve to sixteen. Hello, Laura. Do you have a minute? Sure, John. What's up? I've been considering enrolling in the study abroad program in Singapore for psychology that you completed last term, but I'm still unsure of some things. What things in particular? Well, I couldn't find much information on the application process. What was it like? Actually, it was a bit too complicated. There are a lot of steps to complete. I see. And what did you think about the lectures there? They were excellent. I found all of them very informative and insightful. And the lecturers themselves? They are all experts in their areas. A few of them are even published authors, especially the professor of my psychometrics course. He was terrific. It was because of him that I chose the topic of psychometrics for my senior year thesis. Oh, that sounds rather challenging. Not at all. I was intimidated by the subject at first, but I didn't find it overly complicated, as it was just an introductory course. I definitely recommend taking that one. I see. Which other courses do you recommend? I know that you're focusing your studies on counselling, so you should take the adult counselling course that is offered as well. Yes, that would be good. Were there quite a lot of assignments or requirements for each class? A fair amount. But instead of a long final paper, most of the classes I took concluded with a final test. Hmm, that sounds tough. Are there many differences between studying there and in the UK? Definitely, the type of psychology they teach is very similar to statistics. Lots of numbers, data, and stuff like that. Far less of the theory and discussion we had in the UK, and more science-based work. So it's a different sort of challenge, but it appealed to me. That's why I chose psychometrics. Oh, that makes sense. I'm actually hoping to take some data analysis courses if I take part in the program too. It would help with my minor in psycholinguistics. Speaking of which, I have some information about data courses in Singapore. Let's head to. You now have fifteen seconds to check your answers. Section three. You will hear a student talking to a professor about a car technology competition. First, you have some time to read through questions seventeen to twenty. Now listen carefully and answer questions seventeen to twenty. Hmm, Professor Brown, I'm hoping to participate in the national car technology competition. Certainly, Alice. The idea submission deadline is next Thursday, though. Do you already have an idea in mind? Oh, I have a couple of ideas. One is for a biometric access system. 
This would allow only particular users to unlock, start, and drive the vehicle by using sensors. Interesting idea. How would that work exactly? Well, it would require the use of a scanner to access the vehicle and interior sensors to scan the eyes of drivers for retinal confirmation. Drivers would place a thumb on the outdoor scanner to unlock the vehicle, and the retinal sensor would allow them to turn on the ignition. That might be complicated. Do you have any ideas on how that sensor might work? I was thinking about embedding it in the rearview mirror. The driver would simply look into the mirror, and the sensor would scan their retina. If the person is authorized to use the vehicle, the ignition would automatically turn on. Sounds impressive. I think you should go ahead with that idea. Is there anything else you need help with? Well, actually, the entrance fee is higher than I expected. Oh, there actually is a sponsorship from the university that you may be eligible for, and as far as I know, you'll be able to do that. Then the cost of two hundred dollars for entering the competition would be lifted, and of course, you'd be able to use materials for the project at our lab facilities. You can pick up a form to apply for the sponsorship at the academic office. Excellent. And what is required for the application? You'll first need to submit a proposal, no longer than one page, to the dean of the engineering college by this Wednesday. If he thinks your idea is intriguing enough, then he'll meet with you in person to discuss some additional details about it. All right. I suppose I ought to get started on typing my proposal then. Oh, and for your reference. The proposal must include a rough design or sketch of your idea; otherwise, the dean won't accept it. It's a very particular requirement, but it's because he prefers to look at papers with graphical information. The proposal can be structured as you like and in any file format, and you can list references any way you want as well. That's exactly what I was going to inquire about next. Actually, would you have some time to meet either today or Tuesday to provide me with some guidance on how to draft the proposal? Certainly, I'll be available at my office after 4 p.m. this Tuesday. See you then. Great, I'll come by your office at 4:30 on Tuesday. Thanks. You now have 15 seconds to check your answers. Section four. You will hear a lecture by a dietary expert about the ways in which people can reduce their sugar intake. First, you have some time to read through questions twenty-one to twenty-five. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-five. So, as we discussed last time, sugar is the culprit for a variety of ailments. Not only is it an addictive substance, but it is a direct cause for diabetes, the rates of which have never been higher. In addition to that, it also contributes to heart disease, obesity, and mood disorders. And those health issues are also rising at an alarming rate. The problem is that people are consuming more sugar than we even realize. So, how can we reduce our intake and avoid a variety of health issues? Well, first, it is important to read through ingredients on manufactured products and be aware that sugar has different names: sucrose, glucose, and fructose, just to name a few. So, when advising patients. It is naturally best to tell them to avoid products with added sugar, and use sweeteners that are as natural as possible, and stay away from processed sugar. Something like honey provides sweetness and is better for digestion than refined sugar, as it allows nutrients to be absorbed more easily. It also contains fewer empty calories than sugar. If the taste of honey is too diverse and processed sugar is preferred. Then it is better to use it in its raw state, such as brown sugar, while common white table sugar should be eliminated. 
and it's also important to not drink sugars. People don't realize the enormous sugar content in a soft drink, and even fruit juices have a very high concentration of sugar as well as high caloric intake. Water, of course, is the number one fluid we should consume. But I believe herbal teas are another great option because they give you some flavor and they can offer extra vitamins that are good for us. Another thing to avoid is manufactured food products that are labeled fat free. Often, to make up for the flavor from missing fat, sugar is added. Just for one example, it is better to use real cream in your coffee rather than a fat free substitute. And likewise, urge people to avoid products that are said to be sugar free as they usually contain chemical sugar substitutes which can actually be more harmful than processed sugar. Most dietary experts agree that the best thing people can do is get the sweetness they want through natural sources rather than sweets or sugarless alternatives with chemicals. Get it through fruits and vegetables, above all. They are much better source of natural sugar and they also contain essential vitamins your body needs. That's the best way to get the sweetness your appetite may want. But you can also eat yogurt and whole wheat products. You now have 15 seconds to check your answers. Hacker's Test Section 2 You will hear the head of a development panel talk about a sports complex. First, you have some time to read through questions 1 to 5. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. I'm pleased that you've all gathered here for this public meeting at Brighton City Hall today. I know that many of you are excited to hear details about this weekend's opening of the Brighton Sports Complex. So I've asked Shane Downs, the head of the committee that has been overseeing the development of the complex, to share that information with you. Shane. Thank you. As many of you are already aware, the Brighton Sports Complex will be the largest athletic stadium our city has ever seen, serving primarily as the venue for national tennis matches. I am speaking today on behalf of the entire committee that helped get the project started. I am happy to say to all City Council members here with us today that we stayed well under our budget. The project was also finished by our completion deadline and will open as scheduled. Many of the council members already toured the facility and were very impressed with what they saw. I guess now is a good time to talk about the various sports facilities that are housed in the complex. Not only does the complex house 22 tennis courts, but it also has two full sites basketball courts. One will be indoors and available to use year-round. Furthermore, it will be used for games played among regional and national teams. The complex also has a volleyball court, an indoor football field, a weight room and an Olympic-sized swimming pool. We are incredibly excited to welcome the citizens of Brighton to use these facilities. And soon, we will have more details about our plans for a yoga studio. In addition to the exercise facilities, several dining establishments will also be available at the complex. Of course, we want to encourage all of our citizens to lead a healthy lifestyle, so we did not grant retail licenses to any fast food restaurants. Instead, there will be a selection of establishments selling salads, smoothies and sandwiches made with organic ingredients. All the ingredients are from local sources, giving the visitors to these establishments reassurance that they have not travelled long distances or been processed heavily. 
As with the rest of our facilities, they will be open from 6 a.m. until 10 p.m., and both members and non members can patronize any of these establishments, which have been placed on the ground floor. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you can read through questions 6 to 10. Now, listen and answer questions 6 to 10. OK, I'll quickly discuss the Complex's membership program. Citizens will need to stop by the reception desk and fill out a registration form to become a member. They will then be presented with a membership card that can be used to access all of our facilities. That is, everywhere except the swimming pool. There will be an additional £100 annual fee to use this facility and members will be able to access the area with their cards. This annual fee will be in addition to the membership fee for overall general use of the complex. And patrons will also be able to rent out private lockers for reasonable rates if they want to have their own. We also have our own car park and will offer complimentary parking to all guests. And we will also have several event halls that members can hire for special events. All fees can be paid easily either in person at the reception desk or by credit card using our online payment system. Oh, and finally, I'm sure most of you already know this, but Miller's Road, where Brighton Sports Complex is located, will be blocked off this weekend for street repairs. So it'll be tough to park there. Instead, Ample free parking is available in a large car park that has been constructed adjacent to the complex. Join us at the grand opening this Saturday at 10am and pick up a free t-shirt with our facility's logo on the front. The other committee members and I will expect to see you all there. And now I'll take any questions you might have. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a conversation between two students and a professor talking about a project on globalized marketing in business. First, you have some time to read through questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Thanks for stopping by my office, Catherine and Matthew. So, how are you both doing on the project about globalised marketing in business? I think everything's going smoothly so far. We have finished our outline for the structure of the report and I've just finished our introduction. And I've been doing the research for the main body. Yes, we've started doing research online. About specific globalised companies. So when we finish that, we can begin work on writing the main body of the report. Well, what companies have you focused on already, Catherine? I've discovered some information about globalised fast food businesses. What's notable about these companies is how they've altered their product offerings to appeal to various markets worldwide. So you've covered one aspect of marketing there, products. Have either of you researched any specific examples of that? I have. 
American fast food chain Burger King, for instance, has a menu primarily consisting of burgers containing beef. So when the company launched in India, some changes needed to be made to its products in order to entice the local market, which is made up of many consumers who do not eat beef. And what impact did doing that have on the company? Basically, by giving attention to the concerns of individual consumers in India, consumers' perceptions of Burger King's products improved there significantly. I see. The company started to become more highly regarded in surrounding countries in Southeast Asia too. It was interesting to see how rapidly favorable news about a company spread like that. So you've looked at the place aspect of marketing in your analysis of this fast food company as well. Markets react differently in different countries and regions, but your report should focus on all four marketing elements. Um. So, Catherine, what about the other two? Well, I also did some research on the promotion aspect for print advertising for the Swedish vodka company Absolut. This company decided to choose different ads for different regions and incorporate cultural slang into each area's advertisements. Very good. Other than the language, though, what else varied in the ads? Did Absolut modify its usual graphics and size, or did it make any changes to its image branding? Not those things specifically, but other elements in print ads, such as color, also varied in different regions. Sounds like you've made good progress. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you can read through questions seventeen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions seventeen to twenty. However, you'll still need to address the element of price, and I recommend digging more deeply into globalized marketing for corporations in industries other than food and beverages. Matthew's got some interesting information about fashion companies, actually. Is that so, Matthew? Yeah. U.S. clothing retail chain Calvin Klein had some trouble when it ran commercials for a new clothing line, and many consumers in foreign markets found them highly inappropriate. How were the advertisements and products inappropriate exactly? Well, it was a very contemporary styled campaign, but the general consumer response there was that the clothes were too revealing, and that response was from young and old consumers alike. Yeah, it wasn't a good start for Calvin Klein's first globalization effort. Unfortunately, not. But the company turned things around by designing a new line in spring 2013 that featured elements of traditional clothing from various countries, while maintaining the muted and simple color scheme of their general clothing. Yes, and they also changed their prices, so the new clothes were more affordable than the previous line. Our report will discuss price a bit in regard to Calvin Klein. Good. How did the marketing team decide on adjusting prices for each foreign market? They naturally had to consider the break-even point for every product, and based on that, they could determine how much to set each product's profit margin at. Great. I'd like you to integrate those details into your report. Absolutely. I've got notes on the equations from last week's class on profit margin analysis, and have decided to include those too. Yeah, and we're working on creating some graphs that illustrate those equations as well. That's good, because I don't want you to have an excessive amount of text in the report. So, could you tell me what you have in mind for the structure of the report? Yeah, we'll have an introduction followed by one section for each of the four aspects of marketing, and then finally a conclusion. All of the formulas and graphics will be printed in an appendix at the end of the report. Ah, uh, actually, you should mix the visual materials in with the text. Just add footnotes for each graphic. I see. I'll adjust my outline then. Thanks for your advice, Professor. Yes, we appreciate it. 
We're going to head to the library now to find some visual examples of globalized advertising. We thought it might be a good idea to include pictures of actual ads in the report. No problem. I'm looking forward to seeing your final draft submission next week. That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.